What's going on everybody? Hey, I want to welcome you to another episode of Learning from the Experts. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about why Dean Graciosi in Millionaire Success Habits is correct when he talks about how the story you tell yourself is actually what ends up happening in your life. And also about a book called Expert Secrets and how Russell Brunson is the man when it comes to changing customers' beliefs about your product and also how you can even change your own beliefs. Um, yeah, he mainly focuses on changing your customers' beliefs. But I want to talk a little bit about changing beliefs today. And I have a model uh, written behind me on the whiteboard that I want to go through with you today and help you understand how you can change or how beliefs work and how you can change your customers' beliefs um, by simply understanding this model. So I'm super excited to walk you guys through this today. And uh, yeah, welcome to another episode. So here's the deal. I know how frustrating it is to waste countless hours sifting through wannabe experts who never actually help you in the end. Then to learn years later that there was a real expert who could have helped you a hundred times faster than learning it on your own. I have created this podcast to save you time and money while taking you on a journey with me as I learn from real experts who can actually help you grow your business. My name is Colton Woods and you're listening to Learning From The Experts. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through this. I have on the whiteboard written a model that I'm going to run you through and at first I'm just going to kind of show you the different parts of it or talk about them and then we'll run through it and kind of explain how it works. Um, and this is, this is like mind blowing. <laughs> when I first heard this about 10 or 11 years ago, um, yeah, it was about 10 years ago. It was, it literally changed my life, literally changed the way I saw things, literally changed the way I thought about what I believed and if it was actually correct or not. And then also, realized why people act a certain way based on their beliefs. Um, pretty crazy stuff. And so you can, you can actually pretty well, um, <laughs> understand how a reaction is going to be based on what a belief uh, or a belief that somebody has. And so I'm going to walk you through this. The first part is actually a wheel. It's more of like an engine or, or, or it's more of, I call it a wheel cause it drives the rest of this. It's kind of like the foundation part of it. Now in this wheel, or this engine part of it, there are four different parts. Um, and essentially these four parts are actually your four basic human needs. Now, whether you believe this or not, I'm not going to tell you, you should believe it or not, but it's true. <laughs> Just believe me on this one. Um, you have four basic human needs and with that becomes different things that you do because of these beliefs or, or not these beliefs because of these uh, basic human needs that you have. And the first one is to live. Obviously, we want to live. Now, if you're walking down the street and someone pulls a gun on you and says, like, give me your wallet, you're going to give me your wallet because you want to live. Unless you're crazy and don't feel like living, you might fight with them a little bit. But essentially, so that's, that's the first thing. We all want to live. That's a basic human need. That's uh, why we don't all just give up every day and decide to not live life anymore. Like, so that's a basic human need. Now, the second one is to live or to love and be loved. Um, that's why we have relationships. That's why, um, growing up as a kid, like you want to feel loved in your family, which is a basic human need. If you don't get that, it can actually have a lot of harmful effects on you. Um, the next one is to feel important. Now, I, this one may sound a little bit different, but it's, important to feel important because if you don't feel important then you kind of would almost run into the other belief or the other part of wanting to live um that happens a bit but everybody wants to feel important whether you believe that or not you want to feel important if you don't feel important you don't feel like you're being successful in life or adding to life that's gonna be really hard on you and thus comes depression so <laughs> and then the last one is to experience variety um, that one's kind of a little bit different, but it's super true. I mean, that's why we don't all just wear white everything, you know, like white shirt, white pants, white shoes, like just walking around white. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, uh, the giver, but that's kind of, that kind of actually goes, talks a little bit about how they all, none of them really have variety. It's all just set. 
And that sounds like a crappy life. <laughs> so um, we all have a very basic human need of experiencing variety. It's why we go on vacations. It's why uh, we like to change things up, go different places, move to a different house. Like whatever it may be, we all like to experience variety and buy different shoes. And yeah, maybe that's why my wife has a hundred shoes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, she actually doesn't buy as many shoes as I feel like the stigma is for what by what wife or wives or women buy for shoes as far as that goes anyways so that's like the the wheel that drives the those four basic human needs drive the rest of this now after the wheel we have a window and so i have a, a window drawn up and we'll show you a little bit more as i go here but i have a window drawn up and this is called the belief window now essentially this is like a little glass it's in front of your eyes and it's there 24 7 365 it doesn't move it doesn't leave you 24 7 it is there and you see the world through this window and you accept information in from the world through this window and on this window is etched or are etched multiple beliefs or principles that you have and the older you get the more principles you end up having just because you experience life and you gain knowledge different ways and you come to understand different things and so you gain more principles on this belief window as you grow older. I mean, think about it. When you're first born, you don't have any beliefs or principles, which you actually get a lot of them from your family and friends and could not quite always be correct, but that's a belief that you have. And so you kind of start somewhere and you start with a belief on there or a principle that is on your window that you see the world through. And I'll explain why this is important here in just a second, but bear with me, okay? This is a little bit technical, I understand it, but once I get through this, it'll make a ton of sense. So after that, um, we have our belief window. After the belief window is a bridge. And with that, the reason it's a bridge is because it's, we call it the rules part, the rules bridge, because it's the if then rule. And that bridges your beliefs to your actions. So if you have beliefs on your belief window, there's a rule that if you believe this, then you will have a certain reaction based on that belief that you have. And so after the bridge is the, it kind of looks like a play sign. Like, like when you press play on a video, like that triangle sideways kind of sign. And uh, so that's, that's the action that you get from your, your beliefs. And that, I mean, that's your behavior, what's, what's going to come about. And then after that, after the play symbol is a box called results. And essentially this is the result you get from your belief and the action from the belief. And it could be either good or bad, um, which that's kind of a very basic way of saying it because we don't always know if it's going to be good always. It could change. There could be a better one. There could be the best one. There could be different um, <laughs> grades of how good that belief actually is. And so here's kind of it. Here's the wheel. Here's the four uh, basic human needs, which then believe, which then leads to the belief window that you see out of with all the principles written on it. And then you get to the bridge, which is if you believe this, then the action will be, which the action is the play symbol after the bridge, um, I'm kind of explaining this a little bit more for those who are listening on the podcast, but I am recording this on video so that you can see it on YouTube as well. So then you have the action, which re, which go to the results box. This is where your results get categorized or put. And then I have a line that goes from the results box all the way back to the beginning where the wheel is at. And this is the feedback and um, this is kind of to help us understand that, yes, we may have a good result, but if it, is it going to meet our needs over time? Is it going to be a good result over time? Is it always going to be a good, good result or not? Now here's something to know. If the results do not meet our needs, then there is an incorrect belief written on our belief window or principle written on our belief window. So if the results aren't meeting our needs, then we have a bad belief or a bad principle, which, yeah, so 
Okay. Now, with that being said, this is actually a pretty funny story, and this is kind of almost a hard one to get through, but um, it, it shows, it kind of shows it. So, <laughs> um, I'm going to tell you a story about ham. <laughs> I like to cook. I don't know if you guys like to cook or if you even knew that about me, but I actually really enjoy cooking. Cooking is awesome. Um, <laughs> and, oh uh, yeah, one sec, hold on. Oh man, I thought I, uh, I thought the recording stopped there for a sec, but, um, okay. So I like, I love to cook. Now I heard the story and I was like, that's hilarious. Oh, by the way, um, I first heard about this from a guy named Hiram Smith who started Franklin Covey. I don't know if you remember the Franklin Covey like day planners back in the day. That's the guy that talks about this and where I first learned it. And man, was it gold. It was ridiculously awesome when I first heard it. Changed my life. So he told a story about ham and I've since told this story because it, I feel like it breaks beliefs very well about family beliefs. Now there are principles or a set of beliefs that are personal. There's beliefs for nations. There's beliefs for corporations. There's beliefs for families. Like there are beliefs for a lot of different like categories or people and like a gathering of pre people. Um, just like we have different beliefs in the USA, actually, than a lot of other countries do. <laughs> like, we believe in free capital. Like, come on. And, uh, yeah, a lot of countries don't. So, we actually believe that that's better, whereas other countries don't believe it's better. So, there are different beliefs per, yeah, country, even. Now, ham. <laughs> this is actually a really interesting one, because... There's a story about a newlywed couple and the wife cooks a ham for the husband, right? And she, she cuts the ends off the ham before she even sticks it in the oven to cook it. And you're like, well, that's kind of weird, whatever. Well, she cooks it, comes out and the husband's like, why did you cut the ends off your hand? Like off the ham? Like that's weird because in his family growing up, you didn't cut the ends off the ham, which if you are married, you have realized that your family and your wife's family have different beliefs. It's just the way it is. And you guys will see things totally different. And you got to work through those beliefs until you figure out who's right or you, uh, yeah, I'm not going to go there. But anyway, so he's like, I don't believe this. This is not, this is no. And she, she's like, well, it tastes better that way. He's like, I don't believe you. That's not, yeah. So he calls her mom. And says, hey, I understand you cut the ends off of your ham. Why? And she's like, oh, because it tastes better. And he's like, no, like, there's no way. Like, it, like, dries it out. Like, I don't know. Like, it does not taste better if you cut the ends off the ham. That makes no sense to me. And luckily enough, the grandma was still alive. And so he's, I guess, perturbed enough to call um, the grandma just to figure out why they cut the hand, the ends off the ham. So maybe she'll have a different answer. So he calls, calls up the grandma and says, all right, I understand that you cut the ends off of your ham when you cook your ham. Now, I don't like, I don't understand this. So can you tell me why? And she's like, yeah, it won't fit in my oven if I don't. And he's like, thank you. Like, that's exactly it. So what happened was she was like, Hey, this ham won't fit in my oven if I don't cut the ends off of it. So I'm going to cut the ends off of it, stick in the oven and cook it. Well, then the daughter believed that that was just to make it taste better, which then she passed that belief down to her daughter. And now it was a tradition that had been happening, which they had the wrong even belief about it. So interesting story. But if you think about it, the belief window here. Now she has, the daughter has the newlywed. The girl has a belief that you cut the ends off the ham to make it taste better, which is a different belief than what the husband had. Now, if she believes that, then she's going to cut the ends off the ham as we're going through this model. So the bridge, she'll pass through the bridge and the action will be that she'll actually cut the ends off of the ham. Now, are the results going to meet their needs? Well, for the daughter, yeah, but for the son-in-law, it was not, it wasn't meeting his needs and he had to figure out why. So, which then came back and they learned that that was a bad 
belief or bad principle. And so now the the daughter was even like, oh, okay, I was wrong, whatever. Now I won't cut the ends off the ham because it doesn't actually make it taste better. In fact, I think it would dry it out more. So anyway, <laughs> that's just one scenario. That's just one belief. That's just a small belief. Um, now let's, uh, let's go through one here. This is, this one's, a, this is a good one. And obviously, and I didn't really talk much about like the, the, the basic human needs for her, but that was probably to experience variety. Wasn't that one to have different, I mean, we cook different food and for him, he's like, uh, I want it to be a better ham and wants to experience a better variety. So he's trying to figure out why now let's walk through this belief. There are a lot of people and I used to believe this growing up or as a kid again, but, um, there's a belief that the news always tells the truth. Which, if you've read Trust Me, I'm Lying by Ryan Holiday, <laughs> you'll very soon understand that that's actually not true at all. Um, now, I'm not saying they don't always tell the truth, but some people believe that everything the news says is truth, and you have to believe it. Like, yeah, no. I mean, what... Who runs the news? People do. Are people always right? No, they're not always right. They, in fact, are wrong quite often. So, um, Ryan Holiday goes in this book, talks about how he used to actually develop false stories that were negative because negative stories actually get a lot more reads, um, get a lot more clicks on the website and get a lot more people following it because apparently negative things are just more... People are just drawn to it more. It's kind of interesting. But he talks about how he used to leak a story about things that were even negative stories about something he wanted to promote or get the word out about and would leak it to a small like news kind of area or a small magazine or publishing or blog or whatever. And then it would kind of get passed up the chain until it got to like big news sites. And now the news is covering the story where they got from the place below them that apparently is getting a lot of attention and would actually drive a lot of um, viewers or advertising for whatever he wanted to based off of what the negative news was. And so he was literally making up stories or doing things just to get reactions out of people so that he could get the word out a little bit more about something. So interesting. Now, here's the, here's the thing. If you believe that the news always tells the truth and the news says, hey, guess what? War is probably gonna happen in like three weeks. It's gonna happen. Like, this is going on, this is going on. I mean, the only prediction we can make is like three weeks, war is gonna happen. And so if you believe that the news always tells the truth, what is your reaction gonna be? If you believe that, then your action will be, you're gonna be getting ready for war. Like things are, you're not going to be focused on other things that may be important in your life at that time. You're going to be focused on preparing for this war that's going to happen. You're going to either be buying guns or buying ammo or like, you know, building like metal store, like, yeah, just shelters or whatever. Or you're going to be leaving the country. Like you're going to be moving. And then in three weeks when it doesn't happen, you're like, what the heck? They said it was going to happen, but it didn't. And yeah, so now... Are those results going to meet your needs? Um, which maybe after, maybe someday later, after he's built a metal shelter, it could serve as something good for him. But the result is not going to meet his their needs at that time or then. And so you'll then start to realize or understand that, hey, maybe the news isn't always correct. Or isn't always telling the truth. Um, honestly, if you have ever read... Or, yeah, if you've ever read Millionaire Success Habits, and if you've ever listened to a lot of other experts um, that are <laughs> successful in life, they will tell you to quit, stop, or to stop watching the news. Quit watching the news. It is, It doesn't do anything for you. It's nothing but, yeah. does nothing for you. And if it's something really big, you'll hear about it from somebody else. Like, why waste your time watching the news? Because they'll just... It's a business. All they want to do is keep you watching. They need viewers. I mean, yeah. So, anyways. 
that is kind of a, an example there. Now, here's another, here's a simple one. You have a belief that all dogs are vicious. Some people have this belief. Some people don't. But some people do. And so if you have that belief based on this principle, and we go through the bridge, if you believe that all dogs are vicious, then your action will be when you see a dog, you are running for your life. Because to live is the basic human need that will be driving that action. You're going to be jumping fences. You're going to be running as fast as you possibly can and probably faster than you wrote or you could run even track when you were in high school. So anyways, now are the results going to meet your needs on that? Well, I say that that's pretty good. Like, yeah, the results will meet your needs is like maybe for the person who doesn't think all dogs could be vicious or are vicious and ends up getting in a, a bad um, situation with a dog. Whereas you were like high telling it out of there, you could be living and the other person could have some issues, you know? So could, I mean, that'll, re, that'll, that'll meet your needs, but then is it going to meet your needs when you run away from it? And like, everybody's looking at you like, what the heck? That's like a little tiny, like Yorkie, like that thing's not going to do anything to you. Like, so you're going to feel dumb after that. <laughs> Anyways, so, um, yeah, I actually, uh, it's really interesting to me about how, you know, parents, like people, like when you grow up, it's interesting to me because it's like some kids believe that whatever their parents tell them is truth 100%. And I, I get that. I was probably the same way because that's all, you know, um, actually good quote. Myron Golden, who's the man, <laughs> um, if you can learn from him, he's, he's, he's awesome. Oh, man, crazy stuff. But I have a quote over here on the wall from Myron Golden that I had to write down because I was like, yes, that makes, yeah. And he said, people would do better if they knew better. People don't know better. People don't know things that, or they have beliefs on their windows but they don't have a belief or a correct principle on their window because they've never been taught that um, or never been around it or, or heard it or exposed to it to um, gain a correct principle for that, um, for whatever that belief or whatever they're doing. Um, so here's a, oh, here's a good one. Websites. So I'm a huge ClickFunnels fan. Love ClickFunnels. Um, uh, yeah, I, I would seriously go to every ClickFunnels anything if I totally could. So I love ClickFunnels. I use ClickFunnels. Uh, learning from the experts.com is made with ClickFunnels. ClickFunnels is the, it's awesome. It's amazing. And now if you think about it, like they, they totally throw rocks at websites, which is totally, it's okay. Because if you think about it, when you have the traditional websites, they don't work anymore like they used to. Traditional websites where it's like, here's my homepage and whatever, read some stuff and then maybe you'll end up finding where you need to buy. And I'll drive traffic to my homepage so that you can see everything and just kind of figure out where you need to go from there. Now, homepages don't work like they used to. They just don't. There's too many, there's, there are too many homepages out there. There's too much going on. You need to help walk them through the cell or help walk them through what you want them to go through and see and give them an experience that actually is tailored to what they're looking for. Because, I mean, nobody has time to try to figure out where the heck anything is at on some websites. I mean, some websites have like millions of pages and you're like, what? yeah, it would take way too much time to figure it out. So ClickFunnels, they actually help you build a website or a, a sales funnel that helps you walk the customer or the person through what you need to walk them through instead of just a, here's my website, good luck. And so they throw rocks at websites all the time. Well, if you believe that websites are the best thing available, you're going to just have, find a website and make it. But if you have been taught that websites are outdated, old, and don't work anymore, you'll then look for other things and you'll believe that there's something better. And then you'll happen to come by ClickFunnels <laughs> and, 
and see how much better that will actually work for you. If you have a business, especially e-com even, if you have a business and you're not using a sales funnel or using click funnels for your business, you are missing out by a ton. Like, yeah, it's crazy. I think there was even, they went through and talked about how having a sales funnel can like increase your ROI by like 540%. Crazy, crazy on stuff. So get a sell, get a click funnels account, make a sales funnel essentially. Yeah. So that's kind of, that's the, um, that is the reality model. That is something I wanted to go through. Now think about this. What beliefs do your customers have? Um, expert secrets is like totally the book for this. Uh, if you don't have a copy yet, you can find, uh, you can find a link on learning from the under Russell Bronson. And yeah, so this book is awesome about that. He goes through about how you can kind of come up with, you can run an ask campaign. You can come up with the beliefs, the false beliefs that your customers have about products in a certain area and how you can actually change those beliefs. Now, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how you can change a belief. Um, if you think about it, <laughs> every belief, essentially, as you grow, as you grow up, you gain beliefs. And I can almost tell you that a lot of the times when you have somebody ask you where you got that belief, you could tell them. On it. You could you could tell them the story of when it happened or why you gained that belief for pretty much everything. And think about this, your earliest memories as a child. Think about your earliest memory you had or you still have as a child. Is there a story tied to that memory? 100%. Is there an emotion tied to that memory? 100%. Emotions through stories change beliefs. Um, and I'm gonna tell you a story actually at the end of this that totally changed my belief on how, yeah, I'll, I'll get to it. Anyway, so stories change beliefs. Stories without emotion or an epiphany will not change a belief. It just won't. So you can tell stories all day, but if unless they start to have an emotion that causes that epiphany in their brain, like, oh my goodness, what he's saying is so true. Like, I've been seeing this wrong. It's actually this way. I need to change my belief because my old belief was wrong. The results of that old belief are not going to meet my needs, whereas this one is going to give me better results. So I need to change my belief to what this person's telling me the story about that's causing this epiphany in my head to change my belief. That's like total, that was probably a lot of techno babble. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. <laughs> um, so there's an emotion tied to it. Now, interesting study they found that women are generally better at remembering stuff than men are. And I know for us men, that's really hard to swallow. Like, uh, like, wait, you just, <laughs> you just agreed that women were better are are better at remembering stuff than men. Cause my wife's always talking to me like, yeah, don't you remember? I told you that. I'm like, uh, you didn't tell me that. <laughs> so anyway, they've done a study that generally women are better at telling stuff or at remembering things than men are. And then they figured out why. And the reason is because women tie everything to emotion. Whereas men, we don't tie everything to emotion. In fact, we don't have a ton of emotion anyways. And it's kind of a bad thing in our society, even like men don't cry, you know, like <laughs> that's just the way we teach it. But like for women, it's totally, totally fine. Well, women tie everything with emotion. And so when you tie a memory with an emotion, it like sticks. You can remember that better. And so if you're telling a story that helps create or helps get that emotion, they will remember that better. That is why Steve Larson's um, podcast, uh, Sales Funnel Radio, and he actually has a, a Secret MLM Hacks Radio as well, two podcasts. That is why he tells a story per episode on every one of them. Um, at least one story. That's why Russell Brunson tells stories all the time because it creates an emotion which causes an epiphany and gets you to change your belief and help you understand that your old belief sucked 
and it's not good anymore. It won't help you get the results you need. So that is why um, Steve Larson always does that for every episode. And he's even said that. You know it. If you listen to uh, his podcast, you will understand that for sure. And same with Russell Brunson's. Uh, he tells stories all the time on his podcast. So on everything that he does. So get good at telling stories. Get good at telling stories that cause an emotion, which is going to cause an epiphany to change your customer's beliefs on your product. Now, there you go. That's like the secret sauce. <laughs> I know that's probably super simple and it might seem too easy for you, but it's actually a lot harder to do than you think. Telling a good story, if you look at expert secrets, telling a good story is actually, there's a process to it. Um, the Epiphany Bridge script is awesome. And yeah, like if you go through like how stories work and the two journeys and it's crazy, there's a ton to it. And if you can learn how to tell stories correctly, man, I'm still trying to perfect stories. I'm not the best at it, man. I remember growing up, my uncle was like the best at telling stories. And I'm like, man, I want to be able to tell stories like that guy someday. So hopefully I can be there someday. <laughs> with that note, though, I want to end with this story. I heard this story quite a while ago. And I think it's become a bit more of a legend now. But when I heard it, it completely changed, um, it changed a lot of beliefs for me. And it changed also the belief on what... Dean Graciosi talks about that I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast is the story that you tell yourself in your head is kind of and ends up being the story that you live out because you're telling yourself this story or you believe that maybe you're not good enough or that you're just doomed to work your nine to five at this really crappy job for the rest of your life. So you'll end up doing it because that's just what you're believing or what you're telling yourself is your story that you believe and that'll happen. Anyways, that's really bad way of explaining, but I would suggest reading that book. Um, so I heard this story and it's about a guy who worked on the railroad and he was assigned to go do something in one of these box cars on the railroad. And, uh, so like the train's moving and he's, he has to go to this box car. That's a refrigerated box car. So it's like for frozen goods. It has like a freezer hook to it. And it's got to like freeze everything inside of it and keep it there and frozen. Um, so he goes into this box car to do something. I don't know what it is. Ends up locking himself inside of the box car. And they're on a train. So like who knows how long he's going to be in there, right? You kind of start freaking out because you're inside of a freezer and you don't have a coat. That's going to get cold. So he's lo he's now locked inside of this box car of this this on the on the train and finally eventually he gets he finds something that he can like etch word, like sentences and words on the wall with and he starts etching on the wall like tell my family i love them tell my family like i'm going to miss them and <laughs> etching on the wall like um, these are probably going to be my last words. I don't know how much longer I can live. Um, I can feel myself dying. Um, which if you're in that kind of a situation and you've been stuck in a box car overnight, which, uh, he was stuck in there overnight. Um, I don't know exactly what time of the day he may have been stuck in there, but he had a whole over like a whole night in there. No coat, no nothing. He's etching uh, these words on the wall. Well, the next day he is found. And he's found dead. Now, that's kind of a, a little bit of a stark story there. But what happened is they actually found him the next day dead. But there was no reason why he should have died in the first place. Because the boxcar wasn't actually even working. And it wasn't freezing in there. And based on the way it didn't work, there's no reason why he should have died because the temperature was not that cold. But he believed it so much that he was actually freezing to death that he literally killed himself because he believed it so much. Um, I know that may be kind of hard to believe, but when I heard it, I was like, holy cow, your beliefs can literally kill you? 
that's pretty big. Um, my dad actually told me a story about uh, when I was younger. He's like, yeah, one time I was trying to, he was trying to surprise my mom with something. And um, he acted like he was sick. I don't remember exactly the reason why or the reason being, but he was acting like he was sick to not give away the surprise. And so he's acting like he's sick. And then he's like, oh, we got to go here because I'm not feeling good. I need to, we need to pull over because they're driving somewhere. Uh, I think I don't know, he drove, drove her somewhere to like surprise her with where they were going. Well, he's like, man, it was really weird because I was acting like I was sick. And then when I like s- surprised her and told her, I still felt sick. And I actually ended up feeling sick the whole rest of the night. And like, I, I, I knew I wasn't sick, but I felt like I was actually sick. He had believed he was, he had like told himself he was sick enough that he actually believed it. And he actually had those feelings based on, um, his belief. Yeah. Pretty crazy. My mom was actually, a uh, a volunteer firefighter and EMT. She's like, she rode on the ambulance all the time. Um, she was always volunteering for that and for the fire department growing up. She loved to serve, loved to volunteer, which she was pretty good at it too. So I don't blame her, you know. And uh, she actually told me told me how when someone is in like a blizzard or a storm and they start to get like really bad just hypothermia and like they're getting too cold, she says some like sometimes what will happen is the brain will actually trick them to thinking that now they're like on like a sandy hot beach and they'll actually start to like take their clothes off because they believe they're sweating. And it's like almost a mechanism of just like, you're, you're going to die. Like you're on the edge. And so it just kind of helps you get there faster, which I was like, that's crazy. I've never even heard of that. Like, how is that even possible that your brain can like trick you into thinking that you're actually hot and you're seeing like you're, you're delusional. You're, you're seeing stuff that actually isn't even happening and you actually believe that and you take off your clothes and now you're hot. So there's some pretty crazy things out there, um, about how powerful your mind is and how much it can affect how you, um, do things every day, how you react to things. Um, yeah. I see people reacting like crazy in some situations or different places. And I'm like, man, they have a bad belief on their belief window. (laughs) Like that is not the same belief that I have. I would not react that way. So think about that. Think about that. That's uh, kind of what I want to go over today. And honestly, guys, this could change your life. This could change the way you see things. This could change the way you sell things. If you don't believe in the product you're selling, you're not going to sell it. It's not going to, you're not going to be able to sell it because you don't believe in it. You're not going to have that enthusiasm. People see that people know that you need to have the enthusiasm about it. You need to have the, um, actual belief in it. So that's what I got for you guys today. And, uh, yeah. What beliefs do you have on your window and are they right or are they wrong? I don't know. You tell me. (laughs) All right. We'll see you guys. Are you looking to jumpstart your business by learning or getting help from the real experts? Go to learningfromtheexperts.com to find pre-approved experts that I've handpicked for you. Please don't forget to let me know how I'm doing by subscribing, rating, and leaving feedback.